Hello and welcome to my video. Please do subscribe if you aren't already. So uh, in this video, uh, I wanted to uh, start to talk to you actually about a new uh, body or series of work that I'm doing. And what I really like about that fact is that I'm kind of starting something at the end of something. So this idea that, you know, by the end of the year, everything has to stop and then you kind of start all again uh, at, in January, that kind of doesn't really fit very well for me. It, there's something a little bit, um, I don't know, sort of stifled about that for me. And I suppose part of that is because I see things in cycles. And if you're looking at things like uh, the seasons, for example, you don't suddenly sort of draw a line and then it, another season starts. There's a sort of a an evolution from one into the other, um, a sort of transition uh, rather than these sort of, s sort of stop points. And I suppose that's what I'm really liking about this fact that I'm starting uh, this new series of work at this point of time in the year, at the, towards the end of the year. But that said, this isn't a new series of work that I ha have only just literally started. What I mean by starting now is that I'm starting the studio work, the painting development uh, at this point in time. But actually, in reality, I've been working on this series of work, which is the Wild Flora, uh, since late summer. Um, and I have been doing an awful lot of explorations out in the landscape. And it's that that forms the basis of my new sketchbook course, uh, Your Sketchbook Journey. And thank you so much for all that have signed up already. But just to be aware that the uh, discount offer of 10% discount continues. So I'll just put the link uh, into the notes just so that you're aware of that. And don't forget to use Early Bird 10 as the uh, discount code uh, because that will continue for the next few days. So. You might want to sort of jump on there quick if you're interested in that course. Um, it's getting a lot of great feedback and I'm really excited about the work that people are starting to uh, to do and talk about uh, who, who have already started the course. Uh, and it's an evergreen course, so you can start it when whenever it suits you and you have a year's access. But in any event, to get back to what I was talking about, the... Uh, the, 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 the sketchbook work um, is now uh, in my studio with me and I have all sorts of explorations and it's that which is forming the basis of uh, this new series. And what I want to do now is turn the camera around and share with you what I'm up to in terms of preparing for this new series and getting started, because it doesn't just, you know, it, there are lots of things to prepare, things that you want to kind of start getting, uh, exploring. So I just wanted to be able to share that very simply with you today. OK, so this is my work area and I'm just going to show you. I hope it's clear enough. I wanted to um, have this handheld so that I could move into different things I was talking about. So I've kind of set the area up so that I can show you different aspects of what I'm working on. So as we start to, you know, sort of unpick um, the subject matter and we've come back to the studio uh, with our, you know, work on paper and sketchbooks. For me, I find it very important to surround myself with that work. And uh, at the back there, I've got a pile, I'll probably stick some of them on the wall, but I've got a pile of work on paper and I'm probably going to reformat some of them, which is why I've not yet put them onto the wall. Uh, and coming forward, I've got uh, one of my sketchbooks on the left and then some further work on paper. And I was just trying some uh, things out, what happened if you layered uh, gloss medium over certain inks and things. So those were just trials, but they can be useful as well. And then coming forward, I've made a start in the studio doing some very quick warm up studies. And these are just three to five minute studies on uh, small uh, pieces of paper. And uh, they are actually A6. Um, they are done, you know, as I say, in just a few minutes each. And what I've used is a combination of the paint colours, the uh, acrylic paint, uh, acrylic ink and some ink tense pencils. And it's that combination of shape and line that is really important to me. So that's why I've just chosen those three simple uh, water soluble media. And I will probably continue with uh, with that media as well. At the back there, I've got some photographs. They could be very helpful when I'm starting to do some of my collage composition work. 
And then moving over here, I've got a bag of, and I probably need to add to this, but I've just got a bag of uh, collage pieces for now, but probably not enough, especially not enough text. And then this is just a pile of cut up pieces of paper. And what I did was when I was doing the small studies, I ended up with a colour palette. And I'll just move over here to show you that was drying out and I didn't want to waste the paint. So I actually used uh, some of this paint that was drying out onto the paper. And then I've ripped it up just as extra uh, collage, which is, works quite well, actually. And then if we come over here at the back there, I've got some of my hand folded sketchbooks that I created from mark making out on location. So I've got a black and white one and then some colour ones and some other sketchbooks over there. And then up here that I've pinned onto my existing uh, mood board, this uh, sheet here is just some more uh, quick, relatively quick studies. I taped the paper this time. Uh, it's just a, um, A2 cartridge paper, 220 GSM. And I just use the same colour palette and it's similar sorts of explorations. And the, I suppose at this point in time, it's actually sort of looking at the subject matter in lots of different ways, unpicking it, coming up with more and more material that could be used in, in whatever way to either inspire paintings or to be a painting. Um, for example, could these be cropped? Um, what is it about certain ones that I'm really loving or liking? What do I want to take forward? So I think these um, a lot of um, the work that comes um, in, you know, to, that has to happen to develop the paintings isn't the paintings. It's all of this exploration and unpicking and understanding and tapping into what it is that you really love, that you really excites you. And I think that's sort of an ongoing the way the way it is, really. Uh, and, and doing all of that is very important. And so what I now want to just share with you is on the desk, I've started to put some panels because the, the question now is, what substrate am I going to use for these paintings? Uh, what size? Um, what format and so on. Um, and so I've uh, started and I, what I want to just do is I'm just going to move over onto the onto the table now. I'm going to definitely work on paper. Uh, this is uh, some cardi paper, this one at the top. And it's quite a thick paper, almost like card. And then I've got some uh, Fabriano Artistico 140 uh, pound and that's that's uh, quite a nice paper and I've taped it um, ready and I'm going to work on 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 paper for sure um, I'm also going to work on panels these are the smaller panels I'm going to work on that are just six by eight inches I really like this format and so uh, those need to be prepared I've got quite a number of those because I am going to create a number of those um, coming down onto the floor I've got a larger 50 centimeter square uh, panel. All of these, by the way, are cradle panels, and so what they are is smooth birch wood on a on a on a frame, um, and they're quite light. Um, so that's a nice thing about them. And then at the back there, I've just found uh, I didn't realise it was there actually a very large canvas. So I might work on that too. So it's going to be a combination of panel, maybe canvas too, uh, and uh, paper. So I'm going to share with you now, um, once I've prepared uh, these with gesso and so on, I'm going to show you uh, my uh, painting wall uh, so you can see all the different formats of the panels together. So I'm going to be just putting two coats of gesso onto uh, these panels and I'm going to go around the edges as well. They're eventually going to get painted so it's not too much of a an issue but um and i'm just balancing on these uh, blocks so that they don't uh, get stuck onto the surface so actually i've just got pots of paint that i'm just sitting these cradles onto and um i'm just applying it to the front face and to the edges and this is just galleria gesso so doesn't matter, it's whatever gesso you want to use. And I probably will use two coats because um, you just get better coverage. I mean, they are plywood on the top, these ones, so it probably isn't that essential, but I like to have this sort of 
gesso surface to work on. I do it on all of my work, all of my cradles and also my canvases, even though they've already got some kind of priming on, um, just because I prefer it to do it myself like that. And uh, it's when you've got a lot to do, it takes a few hours, but it's, you know, in the overall scheme of things, given how long I'm working on these panels for, it's not really a lot of time. So that's done. And that's it really. And I can just carry on till my heart's content. So here are the mix of panels and canvases on my painting wall. I just thought I'd share uh, them with you to finish uh, and describe a little bit about them and how I go about this uh, stage now. So at the top, on the top left, I've got a canvas that hasn't worked uh, from a previous uh, painting series and I'm going to, to reuse that probably. And that is 50 centimetres by 80 centimetres. And uh, then coming across, I've got on the right hand side and coming down, I've got two 50 centimetres by 50 centimetres square cradle panels. And those are ones that I routinely use that size. Uh, the one uh, below has needs to have another layer of gesso. That's why it's a slightly different colour, because I usually put two coats of gesso on. And then coming down the, the, the eight small uh, panels that I had on the desk that I shared with you earlier, those are 20 centimetres by uh, 15 centimetres. And I really like those because they are a bit like a sketchbook page and uh, in terms of size. And of course, I've done a lot of work uh, for this um, uh, wild flora in sketchbooks as a sort of start point. Anyway, coming down now, the big square, that is a canvas and that is 80 centimetres square. And then finally, in terms of panels, I've got those three in a line at the bottom and undoubtedly I'm going to use them the other way up in a long landscape format. And uh, they are MDF panels and I've had them cut to size. So they're 19 centimetres by 56 centimetres, which is like a one to three ratio. So very long and thin. And I think they would work actually really well for the wild flora. Now, what I wanted to say as well is that I, I always find it important to start with a group like this. But as I start working and things happen, uh, this can get altered. So I might some some groups, I might decide uh, the size doesn't work or I might add to them and uh, evolve as I go. So those long ones at the bottom, I kind of really like those. If those are working out well, I might well do more of those and do less of, of other sizes. So it's it's kind of up for grabs, but this is what I will start with. Um, and I just wanted to share that with you. And these will work alongside work on paper. And as I mentioned to you, I will, I'm going to do quite a bit of work on paper as well. And so um, in the next videos, not this one, but subsequent videos, I'll share with you how I start evolving and, and uh, working uh, on these paintings in the studio. But importantly, I'll also share with you uh, the non-painting uh, work, i.e. the warm-ups and the other uh, work I do to try and unpick uh, things further. So thank you very much for watching and please do like and subscribe. And just one final thing, uh, I do have uh, two uh, Constantina sketchbooks for sale and they are filled sketchbooks. They're ones that I've worked on out on location and they're from this year and from an exhibition I did at the beginning of the year. One of them is Summer Moors and one of them is Winter Moors and they come with a case and they come with a sleeve and I'll give you more information uh, in the link where I share a walkthrough of me literally walking page by page through uh, these two sketchbooks. Anyway, thanks very much and I'll catch you next time. Bye bye.